Live from your local election headquarters at the 22 News Broadcast Center, this is a Holyoke mayoral debate. And now, here's Rich Tedemer. Good afternoon and welcome to a special Your Election Headquarters presentation this week and next week. 22 News will be hosting a series of debates among the candidates running for mayor in local cities. Today is our first debate and it's for the candidates running for mayor of Holyoke. And joining me in studio today are Blandford Town Administrator Joshua Garcia and Holyoke City Councilor Michael Sullivan. We will begin. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us, by the way. Uh, we will begin with opening statements. Each candidate has one minute to give an opening statement, and that order was determined by drawing and by virtue of that drawing. Michael Sullivan, you get to go first. Okay. Thank you, Rich, and uh, thank you for inviting me here today, and thanks to the viewing audience from Holyoke out there. Just, um, I'm a lifelong Holyoke resident and a graduate of Holyoke High. I served in the Air National Guard and graduated from the University of Massachusetts. I've served on the City Council for the last six years, and I know what's at stake for our city. I've run my own business here in Holyoke and know how to make tough decisions and how to create opportunity for others. We need to create these opportunities for our residents to get a good education, create opportunities for people to have access for good paying jobs. What we can't do is continue to have our schools in receivership or continue to have a vocational school that fails to deliver the education our children need in order to be successful. We can't tell new employers and homeowners to go somewhere else because they can't get natural gas or force them to use dirtier, more dangerous fuels like oil and propane. It's not good for the environment and it just doesn't make sense. That is time, Mr. Sullivan and Mr. Garcia, you're up next. Thank you, Rich. Uh, certainly, thanks for, thank you for having us. And uh, to Mike Sullivan, thank you for being here today. I'm Joshua Garcia, mayoral candidate here in, the city of Ho for, in our city of Holyoke. And I want folks to know that we have an antiquated form of government of which where the mayor is the city manager. And if you've never done the job before, it's difficult. It's very complex. So that means whoever gets elected those are learning curves. Learning curves are expensive. It impacts the quality of our services. And Holyoke doesn't have any more time for learning curves. With my regional and local municipal experience, I look forward to hit the ground running so that when we talk about economic development, good quality schools, the quality of our infrastructure and public safety, each of these functions depend heavily on how well we uh, manage our resources. And that's what I'm ready to do on day one if elected by the people of Holyoke November 2nd. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. We'll now go to our question and answer portion of our debate. I'll ask each candidate a question and you will then have one minute to answer that question and the other candidate will answer that same question and also get a minute. We have determined the order of questions by drawing and by virtue of that drawing once again, Michael Sullivan, you get to go first. And you mentioned the Holyoke receivership. Holyoke Public Schools have been in a state receivership since the spring of 2015 and they remain under receivership more than seven years later. What needs to be done to restore complete local control to Holyoke Schools and why do you think you are the best candidate to do that? Well, as, as everybody knows, our, our schools have been under state receivership now for six years, over six years, and it's been an absolute failure. Uh, there, there's no better form right now than local control. The local people know what we need to do. We have a different community uh, th than many of the cities throughout the state. And one of the biggest failures under state receivership has been what's happened to Dean Tech. We, we need to bring back Dean Tech as a functional school, providing good jobs, good opportunities, good opportunities for good paying jobs to our youth. Okay, Mr. Garcia, same question. What needs to be done to restore complete local control to the Hoyle schools, and why do you think you're the best candidate to do that? Well, you know, first and foremost, just so that you're aware, I am a product of Hoyle Public Schools. My wife works for the Hoyle Public Schools, and my children, both nine years old, go to the Hoyle Public Schools. And certainly, I'm definitely invested. And so, what I look forward to do is to work collaboratively with our, both our school board and a receivership to transition uh, local control. So that means understanding what the benchmarks are between the, between now and the next three or four years so that as we proceed forward, we are hitting our targets and uh, on the path for that transition back to local control. 
Now as manager, I have to be sure that we're providing the adequate resources and tools for our uh, uh, students and teachers and that we're doing what we can to effectively mitigate what we need to do to invest in the quality of uh, our building of our schools. And so that's what I look forward to do and looking forward to definitely do that collaboratively with our school board and receivership. All right, Josh, we get the next question first. Like many of the state's gateway cities, Hoyoke has been hit particularly hard by the pandemic. The city's vaccination rate lags behind the state average. What can the city do to encourage vaccination among underserved populations and help reduce community spread of the virus? I think we just continue to do what we have been doing. Certainly continue to uh, uh, enforce um, what we can to uh, be sure that we're um, uh, mitigating efforts to you know, uh, make sure that folks don't, uh, you know, wearing masks, washing your hands and whatnot and encouraging that. We do have an issue where folks don't really believe in the idea of getting vaccinated. It's a real issue and I don't certainly want to impose on people's decision to do so, but as leaders, we'll continue to encourage and continue to um, uh, implement ideas and plans to be sure that we're de-escalating um, the spread as much as possible. Michael, uh, same question to you. What can the city do to encourage vaccination among the underserved populations and help reduce community spread of the virus? Yeah, I, I think we have to do a better job of getting out in front of the public, um, leading by example. Uh, even I, I had COVID in the beginning of the outbreak, but even still, I went ahead and get vaccinated. I had the, the uh, Johnson and Johnson shot and uh, just get out there and let the public know. Um, myself, uh, I, I'm afraid of needles. I, I don't, uh, I don't uh, like the experience. I've always been like that, but uh, I went ahead and did it. And I think it's good for all of our leaders and uh, community Involve, uh, involve people to get out there in front of the public and lead the way. Okay, here comes question number three, and Michael, you'll start first. Small businesses have been struggling throughout the pandemic. As mayor, what would you like to do to help existing small businesses in the city and to attract new businesses to Hoyle? Well, one of, one of the things we have to do to attract businesses to Hoyle is get a lower tax rate. We have the highest commercial tax rate in the Commonwealth. So that would be one of my number one priorities. We have to capitalize on our G green energy footprint. We have to get out there and let the, not, not only the rest of the country, but let the world know. Hoy Hoyoke is a leader in green energy. And we should be using that to attract businesses to Hoyoke, to expand our tax base. And that, that will help us improve our infrastructure, have the money for our schools, uh, and provide the good jobs for our youth going forward. Joshua, same question. As mayor, what would you like to do to help existing small businesses in the city and to attract new businesses to Hoyoke? Yeah, well, certainly with the pandemic has caused a set of challenges for us. So obviously leadership uh, being on the forefront on local rapid recovery, some of those low hanging fruit opportunities to help existing businesses in Holyoke and also continue to uh, do what we can to uh, attract new growth in the city of Holyoke. I've been talking a lot throughout the years and even well before this campaign today. And you know we have business, current businesses in, t in the city of Holyoke that don't feel like the city, that we want, the city wants them to invest in our city, but the city's not investing in them. Uh, we want to, um, the, the tax rate, I, you know, I, Councilor Sullivan's mentioned tax rate, I do have a equally concern, I have equal concern on that front, but certainly we have to do what we can to fix what we have going on in our internal government so that we can better support um, the existing businesses and that they don't feel the need uh, for them to have to want to move on and go to another community. Okay, Joshua, you get the next question as well. About half of Hoyoke's population is Hispanic or Latino, but the majority of the city's elected officials and other office holders are white. As mayor, what would you do to increase representation and elevate the voices of the city's Latino population? Yeah, sure. I think um, equity and inclusion is certainly uh, an important strategy. We need to be sure that we um, uh, practice when making decisions. And certainly when it comes to uh, boards and committees that we do what we can to be sure that our boards and committees are reflective of the population we're serving. Um, and, but first and foremost, that everybody knows that I am a, uh, I am a Holyoker. Uh, and what we're gonna do what we can to be sure that whether from West Holyoke or South Holyoke, that people are part of the, the, uh, the decision-making process so that when development or any new improvements are happening in their neighborhood, 
that the neighborhoods, that the people of that community um, uh, have for decisions, uh, are able to make the decisions that impact them. Michael, I'll ask the same question as you as well. As mayor, what would you like to do to increase representation and elevate the voices of the city's Latino population? Well, right now I don't feel there's a lot I can do to elevate that voice. Uh, Hoyok's always been a diverse community. Uh, we've always prided ourselves on our diversity. Um, myself, I, I have a tremendous amount of support and friends in the Latino community. Um, certainly there's a economic disparity that's very obvious in Hoyok. I, I don't believe that it's represented in the, or a problem in our form of government. I think the city itself in its hiring practices is, is very diverse. Um, but it's a, an, e an economic problem that we have and it, it comes back once again to trying to provide equal opportunities, good education, bring in new jobs and, and afford everybody the same opportunities. Okay, we're up to question number five, and Michael, you get to answer this first. Protests against police brutality have been held across the country and included a large demonstration outside the Hoyle Police Department last year. Some protests have called for defunding of police. As mayor, would you support any defunding of the Hoyle Police Department? And what would you do to improve the police community relations as mayor? Our, our police force has a very good reputation. I, I can't remember any charges of police brutality. I think a lot of that came from outside the city. Um, I'm definitely not in favor of defunding the police, but as you may have seen in uh, recent times, I have called for an audit of financial practices, uh, the use of grant funds. I think there's work to be done there, uh, like, like all municipal organizations. Uh, we should have a regular audit. It's just good business practice. It makes the public more secure. It makes the department itself more secure in the decisions that are being made and how the financial resources are being used. And I, I think that's the real problem. All right, Joshua Garcia, you get to answer this question once again. As mayor, would you support any defunding of the Hoyoke Police Department? And what would you do to improve police community relations as mayor? Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call it defunding police, but instead evaluating the inner operations of what's taking place in the police department, what's, work, what's working, what's not working, and pivoting in areas of which we can improve um, uh, police relations. Uh, you know, we, uh, the police department has been taking a lot of very progressive, proactive community policing approaches the last couple of years to date. And certainly what we gotta do is be sure that we're communicating that to the public, building trust, with folks of our community um, and, a, and there is a, a committee currently that's been meeting regularly and doing exactly that. Uh, we have a chief currently that has um, very open-minded um, as well as the rest of the uh, personnel there and working with the community to investigate how we can be doing things differently and, and building that trust with the community because that's what we need. We need folks to um, have that trust in a way of which where folks know that the police department is here to work with us and not necessarily against us. Okay, gentlemen, we reached the halfway point of today's debate. We're going to take a short break right now, but we'll be back with more questions and answers from the Hoyoke mayoral candidates. You're watching a special Your Local Election Headquarters presentation right here on 22 News.
Welcome back to today's debate among the candidates running for mayor of Hoyoke. In studio with us today are Joshua Garcia and Michael Sullivan. And we'll continue with our questions for the candidates. And the next question goes to Joshua Garcia. Joshua, in recent years, panhandling has become a topic and what to do about it. It's become a controversial topic in Hoyoke. As mayor, would you support any efforts to restrict panhandling in the city and why or why not? Well, we got to understand that we can't, when you're a leader of the city of a community, you can't pick and choose who you want and who you don't want in your neighborhood. And so the first thing I always tell people when it comes to this issue around panhandling pan -hand -pan and issues of homelessness is that we have to be, number one, patient. You know, these are folks that are struggling with a real problem. And certainly, we want Holyoke to be an opportunity of which where folks can, can, can seep, seek help when down and, ha down and out. Um, so I, I, to, to put, to restrict panhandling, panhandling that's, that's a difficult endeavor for sure. But certainly, being able to invest more in our, our uh, programs in our youth, um, being able to invest uh, in our efforts in, efforts in our police department to, um, to tackle the addiction problem, that's, I think, where we can focus on to help better mitigate this particular issue because right now the drugs in Holyoke are accessible and cheap. And so if we can focus on eliminating that, we might be able to effectively address uh, the panhandling issue and this issue around homelessness a little better. Michael, your answer to this question, as mayor, would you support any efforts to restrict panhandling in the city? Why or why not? Well, just to continue, I pretty much agree with uh, what uh, Josh has said here, but there are instances where the panhandlers have become a, a, uh, a threat to their own public safety as, as well as to the citizens and the motorists in Hoyoke. If people are stepping out in traffic, if they're becoming aggressive and walking up to cars in traffic uh, out, out in the middle of a, of a highway, um, I think there are steps that are in place that don't infringe on people's rights. Um, where you could use existing ordinances and uh, existing enforcement codes to put a stop to some of it. Uh, naturally, you know, making it less attractive, less desirable to continue this type of behavior will certainly help move people away and maybe into treatment homes, a little uh, treatment programs a little sooner, a little quicker. Sure. Okay, Michael, you get the next question. 100 years ago, Hoyoke was home to some 60,000 people. That population has declined steadily each decade and is now down to about 38,000. That's according to the 2020 census. Losses in population could mean losses in funding and losses in rep representation in government. As mayor, what would you do to encourage existing residents to stay in Hoyoke and what about attracting new residents? Well, I think this comes back to stuff we've already touched on earlier, but uh, I'll be glad to go over it again. Uh, you know, it's about opportunity. We really need to bring jobs back to Hoyoke. We need to capitalize on our green energy footprint. We need to take back control of our schools, uh, provide a quality education, and, and provide a, a safe environment in the city for people. Um, and uh, all, all of this uh, is part of my campaign. It's what I've stood for my whole life and I'll continue working at as mayor. Joshua, your answer to that question. As mayor, what would you like to do to encourage existing residents to stay in Hoyoke and attract new residents? Yeah, there's no question. Uh, we obviously, um, any economic development opportunity we can leverage in the city uh, to maintain jobs, keep uh, affordable housing in play, um, obviously good quality schools. Each of these components, like I said earlier, and Mike's right, we've alluded to this a little bit, uh, but what um, se separates me here is that we have to focus on how well we're managing our operations internally because each of these functions are very dependent on how well we manage uh, our internal resources, our assets, and keep up with these quality of life issues that you and I care about. Our, de our departments right now are operating in an inadequate position of which where they're not getting enough uh, resources and support they need from uh, our inner government. And that's a lot of it because of the politics uh, that exist. And so what we got to do is to be sure that we're able to tighten that up so that we can uh, turn around and provide a better quality of life for everybody. Joshua, you get the next question. 
The cannabis cultivation business has been booming in Massachusetts and in Hoyoke in particular. As mayor, what would you like to see this industry continue to grow in the city? And if so, how do you propose the city do so? If you don't want to see the industry continue in Hoyoke and grow, uh, why would that be? Hey, you know, I, I'm in full support of it, and I just want folks to know that this uh, marijuana industry in our city is just one component of the bigger ecosystem puzzle here. Um, and so what, we, what I hope to see is a catalyst where other things come in and want to uh, open up uh, other economic development opportunities uh, opening up in our downtown area of Holyoke. And I want to be sure that as we proceed forward with mitigating growth, managing growth, that also creates growth development pressures in other areas. And so I do hope that we can uh, revisit and update our master plan. The last one wasn't done since 1999. And be sure that we're including uh, some sort of um, uh, a climate twist to it. So that as we embrace growth, we're protecting um, areas of which uh, um, uh, where, there, where there are natural resources. And then uh, being sure that whatever growth, new growth development that are happening in our downtown, that we're embracing it in a way that is um, safe for the public and for the environment. Mike Sullivan, your question as well. Uh, as mayor, would you like to see the cannabis industry continue to grow in the city? And if so, how do you propose the city do that? And if you do not want to see the industry continue to grow in Hoyoke, why would that be? Well, yeah, I'd, I'd like to see it continue to grow in Hoyoke. In, in my six years on the council, I've been a supporter of the uh, cannabis industry coming to Hoyoke. But I don't want to see Hoyoke become a one industry city like it once was. I don't want to repeat the mistakes of the past. Uh, we really have to rebuild a lot of our infrastructure. Uh, we have real problems with water mains, basic building blocks of the city, so we can attract other industries into Hoyoke again, not be, not be a one business town. Uh, also, I, I can't emphasize enough the importance of using the ARP funds to rebuild this infrastructure. It, it's what our future is about. It's what the future for generations to come will need to, to really build a new house in Hoyoke. Okay, gentlemen, a little change of pace here. We have time for one more question, but your answer can only be 30 seconds. So we'll keep you hopping on that. Okay, so Michael, you get the answer first. Hoyoke is one of the uh, few local communities that has its own municipal gas and electric company and generates much of its own electricity through the dam on the Connecticut River. Besides the existing infrastructure, what can the city do to become a center for generating renewable energy? Well, the, f the first thing we really need to do is end this gas moratorium. Uh, the gas motor moratorium has been a regressive policy that's actually been a step backwards for the city. And it's been a step backwards for the environment as, as well. It, it's forced us to rely on propane, which is dirtier than natural gas, and delivered in a diesel burning truck, or people to stay on oil. It makes it impossible for new businesses to come to town. And we need to capitalize on our hydropower footprint as well. There, is, there are opportunities there to increase in, increase our hydroelectric capacity as well and that would be one of my priorities okay and joshua you get the same question besides the existing infrastructure what can the city of Hoyoke do to become a center for generating renewable energy and so you know leaders uh, with this particular issue we have to do uh, what we got to do is be sure that we're doing what we can to uh, transition folks both resident and businesses into renewable energy opportunities because of this issue around the gas problem I differ with Mike Sullivan's um, uh, approach to just walking in and ending the gas moratorium. That's actually uh, irresp irresponsible and a threat to public safety. Uh, the currently, this issue is not uh, in the hands of local uh, decisions at the moment, given the, um, the control of the infrastructure of uh, Eversource. Uh, so just going in and ending um, the moratorium is irresponsible. That's time on that answer. Focusing on renewable energy is the way we go. Okay, gentlemen, we have time now for closing statements. We're near the end of our program. Each candidate will have one minute to make a closing statement by virtue of the drawing. Mike Sullivan, you get to go first. Okay, I'd just like to let everybody know um, my entire focus is gonna be right here in Hoyoke. I'm, I am not looking at the job of the mayor as a step down or a stepping stone to go on and do something else. I'm not looking to obtain a m more lucrative job in another town. And I wanna say, Hoyoke really needs 
to continue progress towards economic development. There, there's nothing more important right now. It's what's going to expand our tax base and allow everything else to happen. Good jobs, good educations, opportunities. I think that's about it for me, Rich. Okay. Uh, I just want to thank everybody. Uh, I encourage everybody to get out and vote on November 2nd and uh, look, for, look forward to it. Thank you. Mike Sullivan, thanks very much. Joshua Garcia, your closing statement, please. Yeah, I want to thank everybody. Thank you, Mike Sullivan. Certainly, I want folks to know that, uh, you know, Josh Garcia, I'm a Holyoker first. Looking forward to represent my city um, uh, from West Holyoke to South Holyoke. And so please know that on November 2nd, it's going to be an important decision on uh, how we move our city forward. And uh, we currently have uh, an issue in front of us of which where puts us in a path that is making us dif that's making it difficult to provide the quality of services that you all care about. I think Mike is a really nice guy and he's helped a lot of people and so have I and so am I. But we differ in the approach specifically because there's a learning curve and we don't have any more time for learning curves. And therefore I ask for your support on November 2nd so that I can lead in the community that I've grown up uh, and was raised into. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, that's all the time we have for today's debate. Thanks once again to Joshua Garcia and Mike Sullivan for participating today. If you missed any of today's debate, you can log on to our website at WWLP.com. We can watch the debate in its entirety. 